The following podcast is taken from a live broadcast on Inspire FM. Assalamu alaikum. Um, you are listening to Sisters Speak. Um, you're with me, Amina. And me, Samiha. And yeah, welcome back to uh, Sisters Speak. Today we will be having our main topic, um, which is carrying on from last week. We talked about how to be the best version of yourself. And um, this week we'll be focusing more on the mental health side of things. Um, But before we get into that, we have a segment called Thought of the Week. Um, We just talk about anything that's on our mind something inspirational something maybe something small and like funny anecdotes I don't know I usually come up with stupid things <laughs> um but yes yeah, Samiha if you have you could share your thought for the week with us um yeah so I came across this really interesting and very sweet um concept which was love will not save you but it will hold your hand while you save yourself And in a world that sometimes seems devoid of goodness, in a world that sometimes feels too heavy to bear, I think that is all we are really searching for. Someone by our side, someone who grounds us. I think that is all anyone really needs, someone who sees them and someone who stays. And I think that's really encouraging because we are surrounded by so much family and so much friends um, that, you know... And and at the end of the day, we are, like, we need love. And um, I just feel like it's such a nice um, perspective of human nature. Yeah. Um, also, I forgot to mention what our show is about for anyone who's just tuning in or for anyone who hasn't heard our show before. So our show is a platform for Muslim girls to voice their own opinions on current events and issues and even form discussions on general topics such as religion, culture, politics, social media, Islamophobia, etc. Please note that all opinions and views are our own and we respect all other or opposing slash similar views and opinions. Um, but yeah, lovely thought of the week, Samia. <laughs> Thank you. I thought that was really sweet. Um, also, if you do want to share your own thought of the week, you can contact us on 0779481822. That's um, text or WhatsApp. Um, you can call on 0777, I mean 01582 and we are on Facebook Live, so comment down below on our Facebook Live. Um, and I think my thought of the week is pretty simple, and that's um, don't forget to wear SPF. <laughs> Even though it, like that, it's a very common misconception that just because it's winter, you can just you know chuck your SPF to the back of your drawer. But the sun is very much there in the sky. Yeah. <laughs> Although our winter days are very short, the sun still beams down on us, and um, we need to protect our skin. So don't get rid of your SPF maybe get like a different one that's better for your winter skin I don't know but wear SPF that is my thought of the week <laughs> that's such a resourceful thought of the week honestly yeah you need to you need I to help never the people of that yes there we go I've inspired one person yeah. hopefully many others <laughs> hopefully I'm sure you will have but yeah um that, that uh, swiftly moves on to our next segment called uh, which is our hot topics um I'll just pass that on to Samiha so our hot topic this week is the rise of Muslim women in U.S. politics. Um, we know that U.S. recently had a election on the 5th of November and previously they also had their Congress elections. And, um, and it's incredible because 82 Muslims ran for office in 2009 34 of them won, 16 of which were women. And that's an incredible number for um, a country that, you know, suffers from um, minority individuals don't have much of a voice. So, alhamdulillah, that's incredible. 
And in the 5th of November elections, 26 Muslims won and 13 of them were first time runners, runners, with 13 of them being incumbent uh, office holders. And we know that there's been two really super cool and super awesome individuals, Rashida Tlaib, who is the uh, Democrat um, representative for the 13th District of Michigan, and Ilhan Omar, who is the 5th District representative uh, for Minnesota. She's also a Democrat. And two notable young individuals, I think we can relate to this, they're 23 years old, Sophia uh, Khalid and Nadia Mohammed, who were elected with 70% of the vote and 62% of the vote respectively to city council um, offices. And like we have our elections coming up and, you know, young Muslims, especially young Muslim women are really holding the um offices of power in 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 the US and i think that that's an incredible feat really and i hope that they make positive change and i'm sure they won't use their offices for just you know nothing and we know that Rashida Talayab and Ilhan have been doing incredible work to get not just muslim voices out there but just as you know repping minority communities and they are on the trail with Bernie Sanders. So, yeah, all good things are happening, alhamdulillah. And I think this is a positive step towards um, Muslim communities worldwide finding their voices, inshallah. And I just I want to share a quote by um, Linda Sarsour, who is, uh, she was one of the founders of the Women's March movement. And she said, and this is a quote, so... What do Muslim Americans do during a time of heightened Islamophobia under a xenophobic administration? We run for office and win. And I think that's such a powerful mindset to have that as Muslims, we are capable of changing the patterns and the rhythm of, um, you know, of, of politics, of policies that are being um administered towards us so yeah go go muslims alhamdulillah yeah i think that's a really cool thing like when you mentioned that to me it's not something i was fully aware of and i just think it's nice that now we're living in that kind of world where we can be represented on so many different platforms Definitely. like in politics in you know social media any like literally anywhere tv um yeah i think it's really cool especially for little girls to grow up in that in a world where they can just see that and then to them to their eyes that's normal i think that's really cool it is it's such a difference from like how i certainly grew up there Mm. weren't many muslim women role models who were in places of power Mm. um where you could you know enact policies and make changes and so yeah that's that's a very significant thought yeah um Anything else to add? Um, no, not really. I mean, it's hopeful. Mm. I think that's what it. That's all I feel. Like you know, things are changing. The tide is changing. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. I I would agree. It is like when you see um, that kind of progress, it does give you hope. And like we are at what we are at a certain point now, where maybe it may not be ideal or looks a bit you know wishy-washy I don't know um but the the fact that there's so many of these women like us out there I think it gives us a lot of hope that there's we're going up gradually um yeah so that's concludes our hot topics um I think we can get on with our main topic today which is becoming the best version of yourself mentally I would like to um start off and say that everything we say obviously regarding mental health is a sensitive topic um it's just coming from a personal from our personal experiences we're not saying that we're not trying to give um solid advice we're just talking about our own experiences and hoping that um by talking about our experiences it will help you help someone out there um maybe shed light on something that 
um is not spoken about much and um yeah that's my disclaimer for the main topic again if you do want to join our discussion you can text or whatsapp us on 0779481822 and we are on facebook live so if you're sitting there watching us get involved get involved in the discussion we want to hear from you guys um so let's get straight into it um so what what is it to be the best version of yourself mentally like what does that mean to you um i think to me personally it means that um every day as i go through you know like my daily routines and things like that i'm just in a positive state of mind mm-hmm. and it's not always possible of course but it's uh it's an essential part of growing and getting through your day because it's it's so hard when you have a bad day and you're just like you know especially like for example i have to, i have a child so i can't wallow in my own distress and in my own like despair and just you know like shut myself in my bedroom i can't i can't afford to do that mm-hmm. because i have someone else especially someone so little who relies on me so for me it's so important that i try the best that i can to put myself in a positive state of mind and it's it's hard like you know it's so hard sometimes but it's rewarding at the end when you just know that you have done the best that you can mm-hmm. to kind of give yourself a good start yeah 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 i I'd, I'd say that's a good way to think of it to be you know to not i think i did mention last week to not be so um to not be too hard on yourself you know if you are having a bad day it doesn't mean you've failed yourself i mean yeah. um like for someone who sometimes struggles mentally it is there's not it's not linear like you're not gonna once you get better it's not gonna be like okay that's it forever it's forever. happy days no, you are gonna have dips and that's fine i think the fact that you have had a good day shows that you can have a good day again i think it's, it's all i think being the best version of myself mentally means that i can i have the ability to pick myself back up but it doesn't necessarily mean i'm gonna always uh be in a good place yeah and um, i think it's important to kind of um I don't know if you live with other people like your family or whatever mm-hmm. it's it's not gonna hurt it's not a bad idea entirely to sort of say you know I'm not having the best day so kind of just be patient with me and you know just maybe give me the space I need yeah because, be vocal about yeah, it yeah I think that really helps it is it is so important because you can't it's not fair to just expect them to kind of know that you're having a bad day you know mm. you might see each other at the end at each other at the end of the day and you know it's it's okay to just be like i'm not really having a good day so yeah yeah i feel like that is one i one step towards you know working things out is to just kind of own it i think when you're in denial and you don't want to tell anyone including yourself i think that's when it becomes a bit worse when you're like when you kind of ignore it and you're like you know oh, no i'm fine i think it's important to tell people and also yourself that it's not like today is a bit of a low day yeah but i'm gonna get through it Mm -hmm. we did get a text from someone i don't have your name but um they said uh be grateful to allah in every situation in life and i think that's i think being grateful is a part of it really yeah and i think that does bring me on to my next question is what can be done to achieve a positive state of mind so obviously they said to be grateful I think, like, for the small things, it's important. What do you, th- what other things do you think? Um, I honestly feel like giving yourself, uh, even if it's just 10, 10, 15 minutes, like, I do this myself, mm-hmm. and especially when you're a mother, it becomes so important to just have your time um, where you do something that makes you happy, whatever that is you know like there is no it's subjective and whatever 
makes you feel good, even if it's like a five minute thing, like making yourself a cup of tea and having it on your own is a luxury for me, you know, like without having to share it with with my baby. Um, (laughs) She likes to kind of, yeah, share my food. Uh, (laughs) God. So, yeah, to be able to have a cup of tea is such a luxury. So I find that time or Mm -hmm. I find the time to sort of flick through my Instagram. And yes, it might seem a bit shallow to use precious time to go through my Instagram but I learn stuff as well I guess like your alone time yeah I think regardless of what is on your feed it's still if that is if that's how you relax and that's how you relax it can be anything I think even if you've been so busy and you get time to watch tv then that's fine exactly um you know or I snuggle up with a book Hmm. something that I've been reading and that even if it's 10, 15 minutes, it just really kind of sparks your energy. And that puts me in a good state of mind. And another thing is, um, yeah, that's one thing that I do regularly, which is make time for myself, no matter what is going on, even if it's just 10 minutes. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I'd say that. Yeah, just doing things for yourself is really important for me as well. Like, um, yeah like having a cup of tea is nice it's nice and um yeah just spending time with family as well I think if you've been if you've been out a lot and you've just been like so tired and busy and then spending time with your family is um is always great just something that can help you wind down and like you said something that just makes you happy so you know that could be maybe finding a hobby if you don't know what you what your hobbies are because I feel like I had that kind of I felt like that a while ago I was like what even (laughs) are my hobbies yeah so just find something that makes you feel good like uh last year my sister got into painting and she really enjoyed that and I thought uh, she made some really cool paintings by the way I tried to join her but I me myself found it frustrating because I I don't know I'm I guess I'm not a painter but (laughs) I tried and it was fun but I you know you can find different things maybe do do things with your friends like she discovered that through one of her friends yeah and um yeah just find something that you really enjoy I think it's important to to have that even if you have maybe a job that is something you enjoy I think it's always important to have something on the side that is just purely for you for you like exclusively your thing yeah I think that and it just makes you feel good it's like oh this is mine and this is you know I've I've done this so I'm you know just something that makes you feel really good I feel like I said that so many times um (laughs) what do you um do personally to improve your state of mental well-being well I guess we touched on that I think yeah I mean I don't know do you have like I mean one thing that I do I try to do is um, I mean we pray five times a day Mm -hmm. I try to make one of those prayers the best prayer of the day um so no distractions just very focused uh really peaceful really calm and I find that um like Asar prayer kind of is like my break so when I get to a point where I just need to sort of slow down and calm down I pray and then I can carry on and and go through to like you know till Mm -hmm. till the end of the day so yeah find a prayer that sort of anchors you and sort of grounds you in that moment um, all prayer is important, but there is, you know, just like the time of the start, day. Though. Yeah, just um, you might pray all of them, but that might be the prayer that anchors you, that you feel like, you know, that everything sort of just comes off your shoulders, sort of thing. Yeah, I think that's a really nice way to put it. Yeah. Like I, ne- I never thought of it like that. Um, yeah, I think we we did touch upon that last week about, um, you know, your spiritual well being and how. Um, changing your mindset about prayer is for me is you know really important because it's it's like five times a day Allah is calling you and we it's an obligation on us because it's good for us like if you don't pray on time or if you if you've missed a prayer then it's well for me like it I feel like something's Mm -hmm. missing Missing. like something's gone wrong because you know it's just it's 
five five minutes to yourself Mm -hmm. like just with you and Allah and I think that is something so beautiful and if we just change the way we think about it it will become so much more yeah. of uh, something that we'd run to do and not something that's like, oh my, like it's, oh my gosh, I have to, yeah, just get I have it to done. pray. Yeah. Um, no, I think that's so true. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that really links in with my mental well being, mm-hmm. like spiritual and mental well being, it really comes hand in hand for me. I do, definitely. Um, so. I did touch upon like um spending time with your family. Yeah. So would you say that your company is has an effect on your mental well being? Like would you would you say that has like your friends or your family or maybe co workers, does that have an effect? And if it does, then what would you do if it you know, if it affects you? I think that toxic people Mm -hmm. um, do impact your mental health. If they're constantly pushing you towards negative thoughts and draining on you unnecessarily and, and they're just, you know, like that you're constantly giving and not getting it back. Uh, Mm -hmm. that definitely would impact your mental health, like in a negative way. And if it's like your family, because let's face it, there are families out there that do, that, 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 you know, they're not, they don't get along, they just struggle, and you can't, like, cut off your family, you know? Mm-hmm. But you can make the effort to always communicate how you feel about what impact it's having on you. Um, but, you know, I think it's an individual choice if you feel like your friends or your co-workers are not conducive to your good mental health. hmm and then you just have to be strong enough to kind of be like, you know what, I don't need toxicity in my life. And I feel like um, I try that if it's like even with like gossip and things like that, you know, yeah. when you're part of a huge friend circle or a huge extended family. Um, so, yeah, basically. Yeah, I think um, learning to distance yourself from things that make you uncomfortable is mm-hmm. something that... Um, that is actually so, w- something that we can do. We can, I, I think we seem to think, well, me anyway, in the past, that it's, that it's not an option. That's the word I was looking for. That we seem to think it's not an option to yeah. distance yourself. And, it, well, it is an option. Yeah, like if someone, if someone makes you feel uncomfortable um, and you don't want to, you know you don't want to make it awkward and and talk about it then I think it's okay to maybe distance yourself not completely cut someone off because that's just a bit you know yeah it is harsh I think you should always have the middle ground in these kind of situations but it's fine to you know if if they talk about something that makes you uncomfortable or they do something just the way they act then you can you know talk to them less maybe or this is just something I've done and it's helped Mm -hmm. um but yeah I think that's the I I think especially for younger uh for younger people um it is we do seem to think that we have to um be on good terms with everyone everyone has to like us and Mm -hmm. Not everyone's gonna like us. I mean, I know let's what be you real. Mean, we like, don't. Yeah. We don't like yeah. every single yes, person we meet. So I not know. everyone's gonna like, like us, us, which is which is absolutely fine. If someone doesn't like you, that's just. I mean, who cares? There's loads of people that like you. But then I think there's so much pressure to be likable. Yeah. Like you know, to have the sort of, to be always giving and yeah. And I think good company is so precious. It is. That if you find good people, just like hold on to them. And yeah. I think, yeah. And I think when you are in good company, you really, you realize how much that matters mm-hmm. and how much the other things don't matter, don't matter at, all. at all. And and how it wouldn't matter if you, if they weren't part of your everyday yeah. life anymore. Like if, if you just stopped letting them bother you. But at the same time, I do think it's easier <laughs> said than done. It is easier said, but like, we do have that power to yeah. choose, right? Yeah. Like there's always the first step yeah. to just um, stop talking to someone as much or mm-hmm. to simply just tell someone that, well, that kind of makes me feel uncomfortable. Um, 
Yeah, I think it is it is an option for us also to tell someone. I mean, if they are a friend of ours, then I think if you value that friendship, it's important to pick up on their yeah. bad behavior and um yeah, I think they'd appreciate that too. Yeah. Just I'm, say maybe sure you should that say that would. less or yeah. yeah. So, um we are coming to the end of our the first half of our show um we have been talking about um being the best version of ourselves in terms of our mental health um and we what am i saying <laughs> <laughs> i've just lost my train of thought okay. but yeah we will be back after the break um we'll, we'll be carrying on we'll be talking more about what we can do to help ourselves in terms of being better mentally and maybe you guys can give us some advice, but see you after the break. Asalaamu Alaikum. You're listening to an Inspire FM podcast, making available our popular programs from our daily broadcast on Inspire FM. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Sisters Speak. You're li- you are listening to the second half of our show. In the first half of our show, we did start on our main topic um, of being the best version of yourself mentally. Uh, we also did touch upon our hot topics, which was about Muslim women being more involved in politics. Um, but yeah, we're just going to continue on with our main topic of today and um if you are just tuning in or you've been listening so far and you have something you want to say um you can text or whatsapp us in on 0779481822 you can also comment down below on our facebook live if you're watching um we always love to hear from you guys and join our discussion um so continuing on uh i wanted to ask you what does it what is progress in terms of your mental health like what would you what would you say means that you've made progress um personally though i think it's it's a subjective journey Mm -hmm. um i feel for myself like you know when you have so much you want to or need to do in a day and it can just overwhelm you um if you achieve one thing on your to-do list Uh, You should be super proud because that's one thing out of the way. That's one thing you've done. And I think that we always are so focused sometimes on the bigger picture. Um, You know, like, I don't know what your mental health goals are. Mm -hmm. But for me personally, just to, you know, kind of just to get through the day without sort of feeling exhausted or allowing myself to, you know, mentally feel exhausted and that's like a huge picture, right? Mm-hmm. We should maybe start, and I've kind of been telling myself this, that I should start to celebrate the small wins, the, the things that um, they might not be so huge, but still matter. So progress for me personally is to be able to kind of just maybe accomplish one thing on my to-do list. Mm-hmm. And I think that has a huge, it kind of gives you a huge lift um, especially mentally, because you're like, oh, wow, today I achieved something, you know? And it does make you feel good about yourself. Yeah. So, yeah. I love that. Yeah. Because we always have, you know, we always have a bunch of goals, but we're not we're not going to achieve every single one of them. And just achieving one is good enough. Yeah. And I think when you don't complete that list, um like that mental list or yeah. whatever kind of, if it's physical, I don't know, whatever kind of list it is, um, don't be so hard on yourself. Like when you've ticked that one thing off, that's great, you did that. Mm-hmm. And at least you did that one thing. And like if you haven't finished the list and you get stuck on, oh my God, I only did this one thing, then that's, n- I feel like that is not going to help you get through the rest of the list. No. Because for me, if I get stuck in a rut, then then I don't feel like I'm being progressive. Just being proud of the small things is so important for me. It is. Like, it could just be cleaning your room. Like, I think cleaning my room is just... I don't know, having a clean environment 
really helps declutter my mind and just so true. I think even just the physical act of putting things away tidying up like washing the dishes I think I read somewhere that washing the dishes is actually therapeutic, therapeutic. I find it therapeutic. and it's so true it is. like I we do have a dishwasher alhamdulillah but sometimes when I, we do wash the dishes it's like it wow nice. this like so much <laughs> stuff came out of my head through the dishwater <laughs> Oh, that's such a just cool small thought. things like that. Yeah, no, definitely. And I think I found something. Um, just having a lot of tawakkul in Allah like is so powerful. Hmm. And when you're just trying to get through the day and you've got so much going on, it's easy to forget that there is someone greater and pow- more powerful than you who, you know, ultimately has fashioned your day for you. And whatever happens is by his will. And I think that that's, um, it's not like fatalistic. You're not like, oh, whatever happens, it's not my fault. It's already decided. But it's like, I'm going to do my best. But then the rest of it is, you know, whatever happens is, is a law. And I find I've been doing that to myself. I've been thinking that. Because it's so easy to forget when you're mm. just caught. And it really does take a huge burden off your mind. Yeah, it just really eases that whatever you have accomplished is the risk a lot of Allah has ordained for you for that day. And I think it's such a relief that thought is, to be honest. Yeah, it gives you such peace of mind to think that way. Yeah, because if you've, um, if you've done like it's you know tie your camel yes, kind of thing. Like definitely. if you if you have done something, look, you've done it, and whatever happens afterwards is not up to you and not something you can control exactly so i think that that lifts such a heavy weight off your shoulders Mm -hmm. because at least you know that you've done what you had to do yeah definitely and it just depletes all the stress and all of the sort of like that need to be in control of the situation because ultimately we're not so yeah Mm. Um, I also wanted to, I think we did talk about social media a little bit last week, but I did want to get your take on it because you weren't here last yeah, week. Yeah, I wasn't here last um, week. Yeah, it's always interesting to get everyone's take yeah. on things. But how would you say social media and mental health link? Like, is it a, is it a good thing for your mental health? Is it a bad thing? Is it a bit, you know, in between? <laughs> I think it's a, it's in between. It's a bit of both. Mm-hmm. So whilst social media can be uplifting, like, you know, you see your friends, just you kind of share your day with them in a way, you know, through stories and posts. And you might be in touch with like if you're away from your family and, you know, you just get to see things that they're doing or whatever, because now there's stories. Right. So it's almost like a live action version yeah, of like their day projected. There's to you. so much you can share in so many different exactly. ways. Exactly. Whilst. On the other hand, it's um, also a negative space when there is like abuse being hurled or when you're, I read somewhere that do not count social media points Mm -hmm. and it's essentially do not count the likes that you get, do not go through the comments and, um, you know, it's not, like when you see, if you, if you have a very fragile state of mind, um, And to see maybe others sort of living a little, like, you know, being happier or having more, it is proven that that will get you down because you are inadvertently comparing yourself to them. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of the the unintended downfall that that is with social media. Because obviously the structure is not intended to be that way, but that it's become that way, you know? Yeah. Where you see something and you're like, oh, that sucks. I'm not doing that. And I think it's such a natural yeah, reaction. Yeah, it is natural. And I think that it, you can be so easily caught in that spiral yeah. if you don't catch yourself. Yeah. And if you don't, I think I think being on it constantly and maybe from a, a young age, like I, I don't know when I first was on social media, probably in high school, and it wasn't as intense as it is now. Mm-hmm. But... Um, I would say that it is a lot for a young person to be taking in all day because it does start off as fun. It's always fun to, you know, talk to your friends and even now for us, like catching up with your friends and seeing what your friends and family are doing. But when you're constantly looking at that screen, I think it's quite 
dangerous for your mind i feel like it's something that we should always be conscious of is how much time we're spending on there and maybe you know not going on the explore page as much because i feel like i don't even go on the explore (laughs) page anymore because it's just it's just a black hole it's just like so many different things and maybe be selective of who you follow yeah i think i I did speak about this last week on my was on my thought of the week but yeah anyway like be selective of who you follow I think it's important even if you for me personally I think I I used to you know I follow a lot of really cool pages and I still find them really cool but I just don't follow them don't follow them anymore is because I kept feeling like oh I think I need that thing that they're wearing (laughs) or I want to I want to be doing that I want to go there and it's it's really, and I really appreciate the the things that they're putting out there. The I feel like it's art in some ways, and but you know, if it's not for you, then it's not for you. Yeah. You're not obligated to follow certain pages and like certain things. And at the same time, um, likes don't mean everything. Yeah, it's just you tap, double tap. That's it. You know, it yeah. doesn't. An individual could literally just be flicking through and double tapping. Doesn't mean they're appreciating your post mm-hmm. necessarily, right? Yeah, I yeah. think maybe flipping, just flipping it around and posting it for yourself is important. I think it sounds so silly to say out loud, but I feel like <laughs> social media really gets into your head. Yes, it does. And it's the reason why it sounds silly saying out loud is because it shouldn't be that deep but it actually is it is, it is that deep yeah and um you know maybe instead of posting things because um you know I'll use an example of myself like maybe a few years ago if I was on holiday then I'd think oh my god this needs to be on my story right now <laughs> or I need to post this today because I went there today but it's like really that's not yeah because what try to question why do you need it up now it's it's not my job (laughs) you're not getting paid to put it up right now you know and does that mean i'm posting it for others people that are following me who i like probably 10 of them i'm close to and then the (laughs) other 100 or so people i don't really know that well so why am i posting it but then recently i um when I did go on holiday and I took all these pictures and I was, I didn't post like probably half the time. I just took pictures for my own enjoyment and then I posted the ones that I liked in my own time, not stressing about Wi-Fi. Yeah, exactly. And it just sounds so silly to me looking back that why, like if you're on, if you're somewhere special or even if you're not, even if you're just at home, just kind of really think about it. Like, why am I posting it? Why... Am I doing this for me? Or am I doing it for them? Um, I think it's important to actually, um, what's the word? To kind of Reset. question yourself. Yeah. Because we don't realise. We Because we, I feel like we do see it all over social media. Yes, to we think do, posts. Actually. We, I feel like parents as well send these <laughs> things like, "What? who are you doing it yeah. for? You know, those cheesy kind of quotes. <laughs> but it's kind of true, you know. Who are you doing it for? Um, and that's not an attack. That's no, just no. It's just story. It's just yeah. Yeah, it's just about yep. you. you. Make sure you're doing everything for yourself. And social media could stand to be kinder. And I think mm. Samsung did a really cool campaign with Millie Bobby Brown, where they, um, like they encouraged people to post good stuff and hashtag it. I can't remember what it was, but I remember that you had to put a purple heart. So it was kind stuff. And, you know, you you had to post some, if you were posting it, post something kind. Don't, you know, kind of become a keyboard keyboard warrior in in comments and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think there's a worldwide recognition that social media is not the kindest place. Yeah, it can turn very sour. It can, totally. And actually, I also um, heard recently, I think Instagram in the US, I'm not sure about the UK, are going to turn off the like. like yes, you can- I heard that. I, don't, I didn't know I what didn't it was. I didn't actually look into it properly, I just but maybe it won't have show your number of likes or something like that. But I think that I think that's really cool because yes. it's such a tiny thing, but it really means a lot, especially because 
let's face it, a lot of young um, people are going to be using social media, whether you like it or not, because it's just like every time there's a trend, you're going to follow it. Yeah, definitely. So why not just make it a safer place instead of saying, you know, you cannot have social media? (laughs) Because, I mean, if you're 13 years old and all your friends are on instagram or snapchat or whatever it is it's kind of hard you're gonna want to join in because they're gonna be like oh did you see what i posted but uh, making it a safer place making it more you know i guess enjoyable for everyone is really important i think that's so cool to turn off the number of likes i think youtube are doing something similar because Mm -hmm. a youtuber um she tweeted she instagrammed saying it's been such a relief since youtube does youtube have likes and dislike as well i think you could like a video yeah, and dislike a video um so she was like oh it's such a relief since youtube took it down and i just i felt sorry for her you know like for her that was weighing on her mind so much mm. that once they took it off she thought oh god i'm i'm she was like i'm so relaxed since they've turned it off yeah and you know yeah just like she needed a hug <laughs> yeah and i yeah. also think it's so um the age that we're living in that there's you can have a whole career based around based around social, social media. media is i find a bit crazy because it's the reason for a lot of people's problems but at the same time it does a lot so yeah i don't i don't know where i'm going with that <laughs> but i just i just find it really interesting no it is cool but i think Part of becoming the best version of yourself mentally is to know when to switch off from social media. Hmm. I think that is so important. Like you said, it's a black hole. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> you get sucked like, in. Try it's not really to cool. get sucked yeah. in. One thing I would say is that if you, because I've done this myself, and I feel like I feel like I'm good now <laughs> in terms of show, social media, is that if you find that you are constantly on it, then just literally just delete the app don't deactivate it because you know you have all your stuff on there don't want to get rid of it um just delete the app and go about go a week without it and maybe two weeks and if you feel like you don't need it anymore that's when you should download it again because that's when you can use it sensibly i know like i keep saying it sounds funny but it really is i think i watched a video i'm not going to quote the guy or anything but he compared social media to having an addiction yeah i think it's so true because he was he said that when the likes go off then um the The thrill of it it, it makes you happy and the same way um other addictions work that's how social media is and we haven't we don't realize that that's how powerful powerful it is to us how how much it has a hold on our brains (laughs) is a bit crazy um my sister did that she deleted it and she sent me something today and i was like i thought you didn't have instagram she was like no i took a break that that was me like six (laughs) months ago she's like no i took a break i didn't denounce it completely (laughs) okay fine (laughs) that was literally me because um yeah everyone was trying to send me memes and i wasn't receiving them (laughs) and then i missed it so i came back i was missing out on all the banter i was so moved by memes That's the good like, part yes. of social media. It's Honestly, the comedy. The comedy of it. Memes are good. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, you know. That's the main stuff. part of our show. Memes are good. Memes are good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I think moving on from the social media side of things, because I think we can do it. We have done entire shows on that and we can do even more. But um, what other ways do you think will can help you uh, improve your mental well being? I think you mentioned during the break something about your mind and body being is interlinked like how how would you use your body to help yourself Uh, mind and body are symbiotic so your body if your body's healthy your mind is and I think I need to tell myself this and I know that my husband who's listening at home is probably like (laughs) yeah definitely um um just you know like uh from a psychological perspective and um most mental health is uh based on your ability to take care of yourself Mm -hmm. so are you having like you know taking a shower brushing your teeth combing your hair all those things um they come under a lot of psychological um like 
mental health illnesses, right? So if you're not doing those things, then there is something wrong. And a lot of diagnoses are, uh, a minor part of it is based on that. So if you are taking care of your health, you just feel good. Like when you come out of the shower, right? You feel good. Hmm. Do you not? Like the smell of your shower gel and just the warmth of the shower and all of that. And, you know, you know you've got like sparkling clean hair. It feels good. And just good nutrition. And I really don't want to talk about this because I'm <laughs> terrible. But I know it's it's so true. And likewise, your uh, the state of mind is reflected in the way that you feel. So mm-hmm. like sluggishness, being tired... Things like that are all relative to how your mind is. And I find that on good days, I'm so energized. And on days when maybe my baby hasn't slept at night and I've woken up feeling really sort of like gloomy and whatever, and it's an incredibly gloomy day outside, then I can feel the tiredness kicking in from like eight o'clock in the morning. Mm. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I need a coffee or a tea, you know? And all those things are are so relative. Like it all, it all kind of plays a role and um so yeah and you can tell like when you take care of your body and you self-care like you know you uh pamper yourself then you feel at ease mentally and I Mm. think that is really important yeah I think it's important to never let go of yourself in terms of like taking care of your body um especially if you are one to struggle with your mental health like for for me if I I think it's important to always have certain steps that I have to have to do otherwise if I'm not doing it then you know I've lost it yeah definitely you know just simple things like brushing your hair yes and um yeah like you said taking a, a shower just if you're having a bad day then maybe just go and take a shower because you're you know, you're doing something for yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I think finding, for me, just finding something that, like, makes me feel like I'm, you know, doing something helpful. Like I, like I said before, like, doing the dishes, like, yeah, that is definitely. great. But also, for myself, I think, I, I feel like it's such a, it's such a meme, like, it's all, all over <laughs> Instagram, meme. like, oh to do... God to do a face mask yes. like face mask is self-care but it kind of is it like is. if you have one day a week where you maybe put on a face mask or put on a hair mask mm-hmm. or do your nails or something like something to pamper yourself it, just on a regular basis not every day is really important because it you have to feel special Like that's, I think that's just something human that you have to feel like you are important and that, you know, we have to take care of ourselves and we are, we only have ourselves at the end of the day. So we have to be the one to do that. Exactly. And I know that my sister, she finds a lot of comfort in her skincare routine and Hmm. she really enjoys going through her I don't know, I don't even know the names of the stuff that she uses, <laughs> but like, just, you know, cleaning her face and making sure it's clean after makeup and things like that. And it, Then like you know, the it makes, toning, the moisturising. Yes, all that stuff. <laughs> no idea. But it makes her feel good, right? And the the glycolic acid and all of that stuff, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. But yeah, it does. It makes her feel good. Yeah. And uh, she's not, she's restless if she hasn't done it because she can, she feels like, oh my God, I haven't done this for myself so yeah I think that's so important I think that's a good thing to actually make it a routine because it it just like when you have a routine of um keeping yourself tidy keeping your surroundings tidy then I think you will feel consistently good Mm -hmm. well not obviously permanently but having that in place and I think it kind of shows that it's all down to yourself and um being um I can't believe what I was gonna say (laughs) I know what you mean like it's it's in your hands essentially yeah exactly just be just be being well one day like I, I think I mentioned at the beginning that if you 
um, finally feel good about yourself mm-hmm. or you finally feel like you're in a good place that takes a lot of work and it's going to continue to take a lot of work yeah so that means you're going to have to consistently do these certain things um i've got a few uh comments from so hale on facebook he said read a book head massage go to a spa yeah. have some me time practice deep breathing focus on the positives i think that's that's, that's actually a very concise a list. list. Yeah, and he also things. said exercise and sweat out all the toxins. We didn't mention exercise. Yes, probably but exercise because, is so important. Maybe because I don't exercise. I don't either. It's, I'm not going to really go there because <laughs> I don't want to be is, hypocritical. But yeah, but it is a good way a to good do way. it. It is a very good um, way. I think I recognize the number now. It's my mum's number. Oh, bless. <laughs> she said, go for a swim. Um, we used to go swimming together. So maybe I can say that. Like, I think it really helps. Yeah. If you can swim and like it just being in the water, the water. and just, yeah. some kind of finding exercise that you enjoy, I think is really important. And um, when your mind is focusing on actually working, mm-hmm. <laughs> I think it really takes your... It takes your mind off other things that may be bothering you. Definitely. Like just, um, yeah, like focusing on your breathing. Like if you don't enjoy going to the gym, then find maybe an exercise class. That's just some. I'm saying this because it's something I've been meaning to do. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that's, it's really important to. I mean, mental health is so like vast. And if you feel like you're in a really difficult place, there's so many places you can get help. And mm. One of the places that I am familiar with, um, because I did some research with them, was a Muslim Youth Helpline. Mm-hmm. And um, I think there's Minds, Inspirited Minds. That's also a really good um, organization that do a lot of mental health support. Yeah, definitely yeah. Um, look those places up if you are struggling or if you know someone who is also we do have the nhs so you can go to your gp if you are struggling so remember that you all you have we have a lot of resources and um yeah go to the right places also we are coming to the end of our show (laughs) thank you for listening to our podcast we stream our daily broadcast on inspirefm.org You'll find all our daily updates on our social media at InspireFM Luton.